So from time to time, we ask our Patreon backers what video they'd like to see us make. We offered them a video on the speaker that you all clearly want, and another one on why the House of Commons always seems so unruly, another topic which has been greatly requested in the comments section. The poll results are good news for everyone. Ultimately, most people voted for us to cover both topics. So here we are, with the first video, why the Commons is so unruly. Stay subscribed as we'll be releasing the speaker video very soon. If you want to say in video topics in the future, please consider backing us on Patreon from as little as $3 a month. The last few weeks have been pretty insane in the UK. You've probably seen the inside of the House of Commons more than ever, with TV news and your favourite YouTube channel reporting on it constantly. For those who aren't familiar with the UK's system of governance and the procedures of the House of Commons, it could all seem a bit weird. So as requested, here's why the House of Commons is so unruly and why MPs often look more like badly behaved school kids. First we thought we'd give you a brief introduction to the House of Commons. Forgive us if this is super basic to you, but we thought we wanted to start at the ground level. The House of Commons is one of the chambers which makes up Britain's Parliament. It's the section of Parliament where the elected officials, or MPs, sit. They make law and generally run the country. This isn't to be confused with the other house, the House of Lords. The House of Lords is also within the Palace of Westminster, but this house is unelected and is generally responsible for checking that the laws passed by the House of Commons are fit for purpose. We've made a video about how bills pass, which you can watch by clicking the link in the description. Anyway, the main way to distinguish between these two houses are the colours of the benches. The House of Commons is green and the House of Lords is red. The colour scheme dates back 300 years and is significantly older than the current House of Commons itself. The current House of Commons was only actually built in the late 1940s and early 1950s, after a bomb hit the original one during the Blitz. A lot of the furnishings came from other Commonwealth countries. The Speaker's Chair came from Australia, for example. Anyway, so now we've had a brief history lesson on the House of Commons, how does it actually work? Well, the person in charge is known as the Speaker. Currently, the Speaker is the rather infamous John Burko. As I mentioned at the top, We'll dive deeper into the speaker in our dedicated video, but here's just a taste of who they are. Their role is to manage debates and ensure that rules are being followed. They also decide who speaks, as well as deciding which amendments are selected. As such, the speaker should be impartial, and once they're elected, they should resign from their current political party. This creates a rather interesting and unique situation. This is because the speaker is elected to represent a constituency, for John Burko, it's the constituency of Buckingham. Although Burko won his seat for the Conservatives in 2005, once he became Speaker, he lost the ability to vote on motions, except in the event of a tie. This means that since then, he's lost his ability to fully represent his constituency. Some may argue that this is okay because if his constituents were seriously annoyed by this, they could vote him out in the next election. And yes, usually this would be the case. However, there's a long-standing tradition that opposition parties don't field candidates for the constituency of the Speaker. This means that for the last three elections, the only major political parties standing against Burko were the Greens and UKIP. Anyway, that's briefly the role and controversy surrounding the Speaker. Now to explain what happens in a division, or as you might more commonly know it, a vote. Firstly, in the House of Commons, the Speaker asks, as many as are of that opinion say I. And of the contrary, no. Question is that Amendment H be made. As many as are that opinion say aye. aye. Of the contrary, no. Aye. Division! Clear the lobby! From the comments, it seemed that some of you were confused by this line. When he says I, he means the slightly archaic term for yes, not the organ you see using. As many as are that opinion say aye. aye! And when he says no's, he's referring to the people who voted no. The no's. Ooh, the no's to the left, 391. So the no's have it, the no's have it. Unlock! Not the, yeah, you get it, the speaker's not obsessed with facial features. Order. The question is the main motion as amended, that is to say, as amended by Amendment A. The question is, the main motion as amended. As many as have that opinion say aye. Aye. Of the contrary, no. no. Division! Clear the lobby! 
If neither side audibly win, then the speaker calls for a division. This is where he says, division, clear the lobby. Division, clear the lobby. At this time, a button is pressed by the principal doorkeeper that sets bells ringing throughout the parliamentary estate. That bell tells MPs that they have eight minutes to get to the lobby to vote. Just an interesting point to note, as the bells are ringing, screens also display what is being voted on and are accompanied by a green background as the vote is happening in the House of Commons. If it was happening in the House of Lords, it would be a red background. Anyway, if MPs don't get there in time, the door is locked and they cannot vote. If they do make it, then they can vote. The UK still use a lobby system for voting. On one side of the speaker's chair is the lobby for those who vote in favour, and on the other there's a lobby for the people who are voting against. In order to vote, an MP must physically enter either one of these lobbies. Those verifying the vote are known as the tellers, and are usually the whips of each of the parties. They have a long list of MPs and check to see who has voted and which way they voted. Once they've verified the votes, they then proceed to announce it to the House. Order! Order! The eyes to the right, 242. The nose to the left, 391. <laughs> the eyes to the right, 242. The nose to the left, 391. So the nose have it, the nose have it. Unlock! So when the speaker shouts, Division, clear the lobby. Lobby. He's announcing the vote, which is known as a division, because MPs literally divide between the two lobbies. Division! And he's also saying that the lobbies need to be cleared. Clear the lobby! So that no one besides MPs are in them, confusing matters. Okay, so now we've explained voting, we'll answer a few other commonly asked questions about the House of Commons. Why do MPs bob? This happens when an MP wants to get the attention of the Speaker. As the Speaker gets to decide who speaks, MPs will try and get their attention. To do this, they bob. It's the equivalent of raising your hand to speak in class. Why is the House of Commons so unruly? Actually, this is the title of the video, so maybe we should have got to this one a bit sooner. Well, firstly, the House of Commons is small. Despite there being 650 elected MPs, the House of Commons can actually only seat 427 MPs. This means that there's a much more intense atmosphere. The geography of the House also contributes to this with the government and opposition being literally facing each other, meaning that both sides can yell across the room at each other more easily. More importantly though, is that clapping is banned in the house. This means in order to voice your opinion, MPs tend to shout, hear, hear. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Something which quite easily turns into a dreary groan when so many MPs decide to shout it out. It It might sound pretty awful and stupid, but when you can't clap, you're not left with many other options. Prime Minister! Yeah. The, no, the house must calm itself. Long time to go, today, subsequent days. Keep calm. Prime Minister. What are the lines on the floor? In front of the front benches, there's some lines in the carpet. This is where MPs must stand if they're on the front benches and want to speak. They're not allowed to stand in front of this line. The distance between the two front benches is about four meters and is said to be the equivalent of two sword lengths. Unfortunately, MPs aren't allowed to bring their swords into parliament. So before each debate, they must leave their swords in the cloakroom and collect them after, which as you can imagine, is quite inconvenient sometimes. In fact, this is something we cover in a couple of our videos. Who sits where in the House of Commons, and 11 weird facts about the House of Commons. Yeah, I know, back in early 2018, we made a list video to try and get some views. Anyway, if you want us to cover more about the House and how the UK government works, let us know by liking this video and commenting what you'd like to learn. Make sure you subscribe to be notified when all of our videos come out, including the one about the speaker. Following us across all of our other social accounts means you'll never miss a thing and you'll be notified when our videos or articles come out. You can find us by simply searching for TLDR News.